You know, being a single mother of five is a big enough accomplishment, but there's so much more to this story. Julianne Seymour, next on the Chris Top Program. The Top, broadcasting worldwide on iHeartRadio and Spreaker.com. I am the Dorkinator. I was sent from the future to make the world a safer place for all of the dorks. My primary objective is to Dorkinate anyone who gets into my way. If you are not a dork, I will pummel your head between my mighty dorky thighs until you're Dorkinated. I will smash you in the dorkhood like the little puny sissy baby you are. The future will be better for all dorks of the world. Now I have to get to the job. <laughs> Portions of the day's programming are reproduced by means of electrical transcriptions or tape recordings. <laughs> you can either tap in the Chris Top program. I am the one and only Chris Top. <laughs> you can either tap in the Chris Top program. Broadcasting live from my lavish studio apartment. The busy are and the divvy did the worst and that of that right back in my The Chris Top Program. And I'm the one and only Chris Top, broadcasting live from our lavish home studio here in sunny Clarksville, Tennessee, with an ocean view. How in the hell are you doing, world? So, hey, we still have a voice left. We do, because we've been drinking all day. No, yep. <laughs> we're, <laughs> sliced. we're drunk <laughs> off our asses. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, you look at our schedule today and you're like, man. I look at it, I'm like, man, how do we do it? Because we started at noon, and, and we're, we're still, still going. we're doing shows. Yeah, and you know, the funny thing is, though, it's it, to me, it feels like we just got started. It just goes by that fast, and, you know, behind the scenes, people don't see it, but, I mean, like, after each show, I'm, like, frantically yeah, trying to get the start. next show yeah. together, mm-hmm. and it's like, bam, 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 bam. It feels like I haven't stopped. And we still have a voice, though. Mm-hmm. That's good. Is which this, is good. Is this our last show, or is there a show after There's, this? This is it. This is it. Julie just said she's nervous. I think she's just getting us ready for, you know, I think we're to give us the smackdown. She's going to give us the people's elbow. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> she's going to beat us up over the air. Uh-huh. But, you know, it, it's funny because I, I don't talk about this a lot, but I have a real job <laughs> outside of doing this. Real so job. That's kind of like, why we schedule the show so far in advance and put up, you know, the schedule on the website so people know. Because we don't do it on a regular basis. We don't I can't, have shows. I can't wait till this is our real job. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's what I was getting to. That's what we're working at. Because we, we talk about the dreams that um, all these artists have that come on the show. But we have those same dreams. You know, we want to do that. You know, we want to make this our living. And I... I make a little bit of money, not off the Chris Top program, but I do some radio work on the side, some part-time mm-hmm. stuff. And, uh, you know, we're always looking at, at something that, that we can do to, you know, to make this uh, or to set this up to where it makes money for us so we don't have to work the real jobs. Yeah. You know, so we can pursue our dreams. This will be our real job. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, and, and we're not going to give up. And, and if it never happens, and it never happens, so I'll keep working my real job. And then I'll keep doing this, and I'll still love it, uh, regardless. But it would just be a, a dream, be I so think. So freaking, yeah, great. That's and like funny. after we wrap up today, I've got a, a script that I'm going to read and try to get something, you know. Yeah. And it's just, you know, we're always doing something. So when we when we turn the mic off, and you guys aren't listening anymore, I'll be up half the night doing scripts and sending things in, and and just waiting to see what happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. And, you know, and I, I feel like I could get a, a gig at a radio station, but that's not what I really want. You know, we, we really like doing the Chris Top program, and I, and 
I like. I guess we like being our own bosses and doing our we own sure thing do, yeah. and making our own hours. Yeah. So yeah, we'll see how that works. I don't know. I don't know. But I love doing it, and I love the CMA Fest. I love the people that we meet. I love the people that listen to the show. And when I tell you that we don't take you for granted, that's the honest to god truth. Because we love each and every one of you to death. And and there's other things you could do. There's other things you could listen to, but when you tune in on iHeartRadio or Stitcher or Spreaker or any of these places, uh, even after the the live broadcast, um, weird hours of the day, you know, people tune in. It's, right. it's fun. Um, it just it makes us feel really, really good, and it makes us feel like what we're doing is worthwhile. And I appreciate y'all for that. Aww. I looked over at you like I want you to say something just as you were about to take a drink of your evil soda. Yeah, I got the still. <laughs> I took it. I- I took it upon myself to serve myself some more. So yeah. I've yeah. got more of it. Are you confident that after today we're done again? Until the next time. This is only the third the time we've had soda in the past, well, since before Thanksgiving. That is so true. So it's not like it's not yeah. like we're doing an evil deed. As long as we don't hiccup. 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 <laughs> as long as we don't hook up the, um, the um, what do they call it when you're in the hospital and they hooked up that thing to your arm? The blood pressure thing? No. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> Our dialysis? No. It's like when they give you fluids. A fluid thing? I just don't even know what that's called anymore. Oh, no, I'm not a doctor. That's how we cook, hook the Coke up to us, though. Oh, that's nasty. Inter- intravenously, I guess, is what, yeah. And, but we, we're going to try not to go back to that. No. And hopefully we'll just be done with it after today. Not, At least until we see a movie. Not, not any uh, four <laughs> cans of soda a day. No, not that. Uh, okay, so we've got the uh, the brains and more beauty behind Smoke Show did Entertainment. Did you just put a Survivor reference there? I guess I did, didn't I? Yeah, because that's, that's the season we're in right now. Brains, see, bronze, you got me watching beauty. Survivor and it comes out, I don't even know it. You love Survivor. I wasn't even thinking about it when I said that. See what you've done to me? <laughs> see what you've done yeah. to me? Uh, okay, so we got Julianne Seymour coming up next on the Chris Top program. Magnolia Emporium, located in historic South End in Charlotte's Gold District, right next to historic Wilmore neighborhood. Home decor. Home decor. Interior design. Interior design. Residential and hospitality open to the trade. 307 Lincoln Street in the dark gray building, right behind Unno Brewery and Craft Growler Shop. Magnolia Emporium. Listening to what a client wants, whether spoken or unspoken. We want your space to reflect your success. Four days out of the year, June 9th through the 12th, talented dorks of the world meet under one roof at B.B. King's Blues Club, Nashville, Tennessee. After three days of interviews, the Chris Top Program, Magnolia Emporium, and B.B. King's Blues Club, Nashville, will bring you the WABA Awards 2016. Two full hours of laughs, tears, triumph, and loss. Many of your favorite artists will be performing live. This entire event is free to the public. Everyone is encouraged to show up live and in person and listen to each live broadcast. Feel free to get a picture on the red carpet with your favorite artist. You are all invited free of charge to the WAB Awards, too. Remember, the event will not cost anyone a dime, but we are encouraged to buy food and drinks at BB King's, and don't forget to tip your server. Some lucky listeners will win free food vouchers while attending the awards ceremony. Some will even get a sweet treat from Hay Sugar Shop and leave smitten. Keep checking this page along with Facebook for the most current details. We want to thank everybody for taking the rocky road to working on being awesome with us. June 12th, 2016, a handful of the world's most talented will walk away with a WABA Award. This has been a Chris Top production. <laughs> you can either talk in the Chris Top Uh, you are absolutely positively in the right place. This is the Chris Top program. 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 However program. you want to say If you're from Argentina, it's the Chris Top program. Program. Yeah, that's how Mechie said it. It kind of it sticks program. in my head because sometimes I, I say it. I don't even realize it. Program, program, program. So whatever it is. Whatever it is. So, okay. So we've had two lovely, talented people from Smoke Show Entertainment on the show already. 
Uh, and now we've got the mastermind. And now the, the mastermind. The king, <laughs> the kingpin behind it all, uh, Miss Julianne. How are you today? Oh, I'm, I'm great. How are you guys? We are doing wonderful, and it's about time we got to talk. I know we've been we've been messaging each other on Facebook I for way too long. No, and we uh, I feel like we go way back, and this is the first we, conversation. We actually do go back to last year. We do. We do. You know, to last CMA Fest. It's because I was funny. Come see you guys. You mentioned that because I do remember something from last year, but it's like yes. a big blur now. Yes. Yes, that was when Smoke Show was just a baby. Oh, we, we didn't even have anything. We launched July thirty first, so we mm. the Smoke Show was just in the planning stages during CMA Fest last year. So, oh, and look at you now, and look at us now. Look so. at you. You guys are just and and I I I told the girls when I had them on, and and, and I, I want to make sure you hear this too. But not only is you know is your crew just just full of talent. Um, and, and I told them, I said, we wouldn't have you on the show if, if you weren't talented. It, it's just, <laughs> right. that's just how it is. Right. Um, but we also look for people that, that have the right attitude that have big hearts and that, oh, that are good yeah. people. And yeah. you've got it on lockdown, Julie. I know it. I pick some, I pick the good ones. I'll tell you what. I you do. I have, I guess you could say I've had lived about a hundred lives already so mm -hmm. far. And <laughs> the, sure. some of the stories are good stories and some of them are sad stories. Absol and yeah. so I have pretty good intuition about people and, and what I feel like their work ethic is and how, how they're going to relate to the public. And that is one of the biggest things in an artist's career. And one of my, in my opinion is that if they aren't somebody that is going to be relatable to their fans who are truly the people that are making them successful, then mm -hmm. there's not really any point in managing them. So mm -hmm. I try to pick the best people I can and uh, we have to have fun. A smoke show is all about fun. We, we are probably the most unprofessional professional people you'll ever meet. <laughs> well, all these trips to Florida, I'm kind of jealous. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, you got to take care of your people, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, the, everybody kind of jokes about it and they call me mom and everything else. But, <laughs> no. but you know, when, when somebody's, when somebody's going through a little struggle and they need a mental break, I'm the one that's going to pick it up and say, all right, let's go. So mm -hmm. we let's did. Go I got a call at one o'clock in the morning from Gracia and that's pretty much a common thing. They know my phone's open 24 seven, which mm -hmm. that's probably why I'm single. But, <laughs> 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 You know, I got a call at one in the morning and Grace said, I'm going to lose my mind if I don't get out of this godforsaken state. And mm -hmm. I said, OK, let's go. So we literally took off at 10 o'clock the next morning. So. So how much fun was that? Just to life. just to hang it out. Was fun. We have a great time together. We yeah, all of us do. And I'm so excited. I was going to take Barry with us when we went the last time and she had some co-writes and some other meetings that she had to take care of. But mm -hmm. this next trip, it's going to be all of us. And a photographer, so it's oh. going to be a good time. So all the guys are going to be watching Facebook like hawks. Uh-huh. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Probably so. <laughs> oh, smoke shows in Florida they again. we got to watch their Facebook page. selfies, and it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'm just so – I'm so proud for you, and you are Thank so you. inspiring. You really um, are. Thank I want to know. Thank you very much. I want to know um, a little bit of the backstory because sure. you don't just wake up one day and decide to start uh, a, a managing firm. Actually, you, you I don't, did. You, you <laughs> no, did. Just, <laughs> well, I mean, there, there had to be a pivotal point, I'm though. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah, I have, like I said, I've, I have, I liken the whole story with Smoke Show in itself, how it even came to be named Smoke Show. Mm -hmm. Um I, I liken my life to the story of, you know, the Phoenix, the legend of the Phoenix and, you know, resurrection and pulling yourself out of the fire and, mm -hmm. you know, and making coming out stronger than you were before. And there have been several situations in my life. I've been divorced. I'm a single mother. I have five children, you know, and I've had to reinvent myself so many times, you know, and in order to be able to basically provide for that size of family on my sure. own, you know, I had to not just take an average 
average job. It wasn't going to be possible for me. Just yeah, to, how could you? And it's and, and not going to happen. Yeah, and just so people that. just so people know, yeah. you have five children. I do. I yeah. do. Yeah, and what are the age ranges? 18, 14, 8, 6, and 5. You no know way wow. you have an 18-year-old. I do. I'm I don't believe you. I am 40 this year. No, yeah. you look like you're like in the pictures, like mid-20s. Yeah. It's all genetics. I was very lucky. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> if goodness. I don't take care of myself the way I should. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot. I'm floored. I'm floored that you have an 18-year-old. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. so you've got you've got your family and, and boys girls mixed. I have two boys and three girls. Two boys and yep. three girls. Uh, yep. Pretty big span. Pretty big span. And yep. you're a single mom. Yep. Divorced. Yeah. Uh, which is you know the fact that you're still breathing is <laughs> is an amazing it's a miracle story. in itself. Yeah. Yes. Well, you know what? Everybody thinks it's so hard, and I can honestly tell you it was much harder with one or two. When I had when I had Carson and Savannah, which are my oldest two, I got a wild hair up my butt, and I moved down to Nashville. And it, literally, I drove to Nashville. Mm -hmm. um, I had our car. I had a one of the old box TVs because flat screens didn't even exist then. This was in <laughs> 2001. Okay, so I had a I had a big ass box TV <laughs> and Carson and Savannah in their car seats. We had our clothes and their toys, and that was it. That and was I moved it. To Nashville. Wow. And um, I, it was it was a it was a big step, but you know what? I I made it work for almost six years. It was fantastic. I had a great time. Made some of the best friends that I have in life, and they still are friends to this day. And you know, it it it, it was a big step for me, but I can honestly say those days with just those two were so much harder than now with five, because well, you learn so you learn so much from being a mother of a large family. You yeah, you yeah. Uh, learn time management skills. You learn negotiation <laughs> skills for sure. <laughs> Um, you know, there are so many things that you learn from having so many different personalities and so many different likes and interests. And it really actually gives you the ability to respect individuals, you know, mm -hmm. rather than being hold in your one little, you know, having one little pigeonholed view on life. I, I get to experience all kinds of things every day when I'm home with them. So I don't know. I, it's definitely helped me in my management career, I would say, rather than being a hindrance. Yeah, I bet. I mean, and, and you, you seem like such a sweet person, but I bet, I bet. Oh, I can put the crack down. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. I bet when yeah. push comes to shove, you're going to push back pretty hard. Yeah, well, I, I, I'm not going to deny that. I'm not going to deny that. It's it, being... I've joked about this, but it's, you know, I love my artists to death. I really, really do. But when you are managing artists, um, something that I've always said is that it's almost like having toddlers, you know, because to uh, <laughs> artists <laughs> have to, you know, are very focused on what they're doing. And, you know, if you try to pull a toddler out of what they're doing, you know, mm -hmm. they'll absolutely have a fit. You know, they're very not self-centered, but they're just focused on what they're doing. Yeah. And, so, and for some people, it might come across as being self-centered, but it's not. No, but it's not. Mm -hmm. They're just extremely focused. And they have to be if they're going to be successful. You know, sure. so and, you know, their personalities are usually bigger than life in every aspect. If something's dramatic, it's extremely dramatic. Right. If something is wonderful, it's extremely wonderful. You know, mm -hmm. there is no... No, there's so much passion working with artists, you know, and watching what they do and what, what their, you know, what their passion is. That is exactly what it is. And it's like dealing with toddlers because toddlers are very passionate too, you mm -hmm. know? And so I don't know. I've, I've just always said that, you know, if, if I could just kind of raise them up a little bit, you know, and give them that security that they need, then they'll be able to, you know, relate to the world a little bit better. And especially up and coming artists, they need that more than anything. Mm -hmm. And sure. that's what I deal with. Um, would I love to have a big artist? That'd be amazing. You know, but I like, I like plugging holes and sinking ships. And I feel like a lot of up and coming artists, 
you know, are so tired of wearing all the hats and they're, you know, they're working their butts off. They really need to focus on their music and they spend so much time trying to do all the things that are necessary to even make themselves successful that they just get tired, you know, Mm -hmm. and same thing with kids, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, it's like with, (laughs) with, uh, with me, you know, I, I just want to get on here and talk, but there's so much more that goes into it to prepare for that. You know, and, and that's all right. they want to do it's is like, they want to get on stage and perform, and yeah. that's where you come in. Right. I, you know? I, I've, I, I have a great team. I've got a great team of amazing people that help me out to mm-hmm. help them out. So um, I couldn't honestly make it through a day without my team, you know, and we all rally around them, you know, and the same thing, my artists – you know, help one another. And, you know, it's, it is a family environment. I don't care how you cut it. We spend so much time together on the phone and I use it. I use an app that's an online workspace that, you know, we're constantly in communication with each other. Thank God for cell phones because Mm -hmm. I don't know how we would have done this years ago. (laughs) And we literally are everywhere. You know, I've got Barry that's in Nashville. Gracia is in Illinois. You know, at any given time, they could be anywhere performing. Sure. You know, and then, you know, the different people that are in my circle, you know, that are part of my partnership, you know, they're all, they're spread out all over, too. And mm-hmm. so the benefit, I guess, of having a cell phone is that I can go to Florida with Gracia and we can yep. still get work done, you know, and... That's the joy of it. I I can't complain one bit at all. Well, it, you, you seem like you're so positive. Nice. Yeah, uh, I, am, I am. that rubs off, you know. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you're you're just making me smile from ear to ear right now, just listening to you, because I can tell you're smiling while you're saying all this. Um, now, Passion Barry, rubs off. Barry in the chat, she's listening to to your interview. I think she wants to make sure you don't outdo her. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. she's um, gonna be a little jealous. She says Julie is beautiful on the inside as she is on the outside, Aww. and then you've got. A uh, couple of requests in the chat, too. They want you to bring um, uh, Barry and Gracia to Colorado and Canada. Heck, yeah. So yeah, at least at is. least you'll sell two tickets or one <laughs> ticket right. in each We've place. Got yeah, two tickets. That's right. all we need. <laughs> That's all you need. That's the only excuse you need for going. You know for... what? I, would, I, would, I can honestly tell you that if I brought them anywhere and only one person showed up, they'd still get the same show that they get if 100,000 showed up. So I'm, mm-hmm. I, we're all about it. Well, that's somebody. We're that's just somebody people. that loves what they do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, we all love what we do, mm-hmm. and it, it, you know, especially when you get. I guess this kind of this kind of figs into something that I wanted to make an announcement about. Um, mm. Smoke show is going a little bit different direction this year okay. for our for our second year, and I have a whole lady. Uh, a whole bunch of ladies in my quote unquote smoke show family that mm-hmm. have all decided to come together. And I think we're all forming a partnership. Oh. And making smoke show the first, and I believe only, completely female based business mm. for artist management in Nashville and in country music. Um, we will have a full female staff. How cool is that? Cool. How empowering yeah. is that? It is very empowering. Uh, That's exactly what we want to do. And, and you know, and, and especially because it, you know, country has kind of been down on women for a while. I was going to bring that up, and and you yeah. know, you're you're not only doing that, um, which is you know pretty cool on its own, but you're doing it in country music where. You know, word on the street is the guys get a little bit more attention. Sure they so, do. So you've got uh, quite the mountain to climb. Yeah. But when you do make it, man, the rewards. and, and How you, much fun will that be? And huh? it's going to be so much fun. And, and, and yeah. I want to see you guys make it. It's like you're the underdog. It's like you're Rocky. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, you know? it's fun. It's fun. And I, and I think that women all rally behind us. I think especially the women at the top are going to rally behind us on this. Mm, sure. You and know, not just, not just the women, but I mean, the men are going to appreciate it. And, and you're going to inspire all kinds of men, I would think, as well. Absolutely. Yeah, inspire and, everybody. It, and it's not that we are not going to serve male artists at mm-hmm. all. Um, it's just that we will be a female staff and we will, um, we will be 
only um, keeping Gracia and Barry as our managed artists as of as of this year, you know, just to really push their careers as much as possible. Mm -hmm. But we will also be um, providing contractual services and um, for anybody in the music industry Mm -hmm. that wants our services. So, yeah. So you're going to be all over the place. We're going to be all over the place. This is exciting. It is exciting. Don't don't forget about us, okay? Yeah, we don't forget. forget. We won't forget about the little people. <laughs> <laughs> the little people. Like uh, now, now, Ruza in the chat, she says, Julie, I'm trying to sing, uh, and hopefully in the future she's going to start improving, and then she, she says she wants to, I think, come and work for you. <laughs> she wants to sing, and then she wants to work for it. Right, right. So I, I'm nice. thinking she, she wants you to manage her, so, so you might have to get in touch with Ruza sometime. Well, anybody can get a hold of us through smokeshowentertainment.com. Mm-hmm. And if you um, if you go there, there is a contact us tab and anybody is welcome to, you know, submit any any demos or anything that they want for consideration. If they don't even have demos yet, then, you know, just slip us a note and we'll talk about what we can do. I know a lot of people don't have a lot of money to put the music together, so we mm-hmm. can we can figure something out. Yeah, it's tough. So. It's it's so tough getting started, and nothing you do is. is cheap. No, it's not. the The benefit of Smoke Show, I've I've been in Nashville and been around Nashville for long enough that you know I've got a great team of people that can help um, artists, and you know if they can't provide free services, then they can at least provide reduced priced services Mm -hmm. for smoke show people and um you know and at the very least i can also give referrals to people that you know they really can't cut their service prices because they have to make money too Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. you know at least they know that they're reliable and they're safe you know there's their music is going to be um coming out what they want it to be rather than mm-hmm. you know just a cookie cutter business because that yeah. happens sometimes too you know when so, when a when a new artist comes to Nashville uh, mm-hmm. it's it's intimidating enough as it is and it is and you look at all the talent all the beautiful people that can sing and entertain mm-hmm. and they're uh, you know they're all good oh, um yeah. you've got that against you and mm-hmm. then you're thinking well I really need help. I really need to find the right manager. And right. you hear stuff and you see things happen all the time. And it's like, man, how do I find one that I can trust? Because it seems like That's there's a tough. stigma. That's tough. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Even even with that, I mean, I've even had some situations that, you know, we've parted ways. And, you know, the thing is, is that no matter who you hire as a manager, you know, you're you're still gonna feel like you're underneath somebody's thumb. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it just it's not the same as doing whatever you want anymore. You know, mm-hmm. a manager's yeah. always out to be for your best interest. And I would honestly um, have to say that even even when you get into a situation where you think it's a safe situation, it's you have to deal with each other twenty four seven. You really do. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes, it, sometimes the you just find out that your personalities don't match together, or sometimes you know somebody's work ethic's different than the other one. Either the manager works harder than the artist, or the artist wants to push harder than the manager, or you know there's a million situations. And I guess my best advice is don't get into a contract that's so long that you can't get out of it. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that's a li- that's the scariest part to me. I think for anybody that's up and coming is, you know, they want management so bad and they want everything to work out so much, but you know, three years is a long time. Sure. And um, so I think there are a lot of newer managers that are starting to come out in Nashville that are seeing the error in that, and um, you know, are offering shorter shorter contracts and. Mm-hmm. Um, but ultimately, I mean, it's just got to come down to a really good feeling between the two of you. And you have to have match work ethic. And um, more than anything, you have to be able to trust and put your, put your career in their hands. Yeah. And if you're not a trusting person, you probably don't want management for a while. You're probably just going to have to do it for yourself until you learn that you can't do it by yourself anymore. Yeah, so. yeah. 
And I guess that that could be a good thing or a bad thing because if it gets to the point where you can't handle it, you know, and you've got some popularity built up, um, then that's a, a great time to get a manager. I, th- I would think to help you. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Because there's there's just a threshold that you get to, in my opinion. You know, there may be other opinions out there, but in my opinion, you get to a threshold where you can't wear all the hats anymore. You just can't. Mm-hmm. If you're if you're going to take your music to the next level then you really need to be able to hand that over to somebody that you can trust. And a lot of it's a leap of faith, I guess, at first. It is. It is. And, um, you know, I, there's just as many people in the, in the artist side that are shady. I know management and, you know, the country music industry and uh, in general can get a bad rap sometimes, Mm -hmm. But there's just as many shady artists out there. And unfortunately, people, I hate people. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, it, it, both sides have to protect themselves. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, luckily, anybody that I've parted ways with thus far, I, I can honestly say I'm still rooting them on. You know, and. Well, that's good. I would hope, that's good. I would hope that they say the same, you know. Yeah. So, uh, you, you know, I you, you you are so much fun to talk to because I feel like I'm learning a lot of stuff, and and I <laughs> when it, it's a, it's an interview both ways, I guess. When you're when you're trying to find new artists, mm-hmm. and they're they're interviewing you too to make sure, sure. that you're going to be right for them. Yeah, because right. you know you want it to be a good fit. You don't just want to. Yeah, it's got to yeah, be a good it, fit for both. Honestly, it's like it's like dating. It's like yeah, a relationship, yeah, sure. yeah. you know, I mean, everybody puts their best foot forward and, oh, I'm great. And so am I. And these are the things that I'm good at. And these mm-hmm. are the things I'm good at. But really, when it comes down to it, it's like, what's your ugly? You know, mm-hmm. I want to know what you're what are you what are you up to or what have you been up to that I wouldn't want to find out about mm, or okay. I wouldn't want the newspaper to find out about sure. <laughs> or wherever. And, sure. you know, I try to address those kinds of things before I even consider somebody for the roster because everybody's got, everybody's made mistakes. Everybody's Mm -hmm. got something that they're not proud of or, you know, has a personality flaw that is going to grate on somebody's nerves at some point or going to, you know, get them in some kind of trouble. If it's something that's manageable or something that they're willing to admit, Mm -hmm. that's the, that's the first step. If thing. somebody can admit their flaws, then that's great. I could care less if you won every award that ever was. I could care less if you, you know, have 20,000 followers here or there. I don't care. I want to know when we, if we can get it, get you there, what's mm-hmm. going to stop us from it? Right. You know, right. and that's the reality of it. We really have to, You people have to be accountable for themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, and and through through me getting to know you over the past, I guess, several months, and mm-hmm. and watching you, and just kind of stalking you. I know that sounds creepy, but um, you know, seeing your Chris post on Facebook, a and it, I know it's like a recurring theme. I've listened to <laughs> right? all your interviews, yep. and I know that you're a stalker. I know I can't help. I, ha- I have to be a little bit if I'm going to do this, but uh, and and I see the way people react to you and to your posts and things, and I I feel like you're genuine, and and I, I believe. To be. You know, it, yeah. If I was an entertainer, well, if I was a singer uh, or a musician, I think that I would feel very comfortable coming to you. Wonderful. Yeah, I'm glad so, that I make people feel that way. Yeah, and I, I just wanted to say that myself because I mean, some people might put a little bit of weight behind what I say, and sure. and and a lot of uh, independent artists are on the show. So sure. I mean, it's I think that you would be um, it'd be good for me to point them in your direction. Sure. I would appreciate that. Um, yeah, absolutely. I would appreciate that. And, you know, I <laughs> one of the funniest things that anybody ever told me, I had a manager that I have full and total respect for. They honestly have killed it in this industry. And I can't say names because they probably kill me if they say <laughs> <laughs> told you who said this. But, you know, when I first started Smoke Show, I was so nervous because I said, you know, even with given my experience in other industries and in life and everything else, I said, I still feel like I don't 100 percent know what I'm doing. I mean, like this is a new business. This is mm-hmm. a new venture. And I don't know if I 
I don't even know if I'm doing this right. Am I doing this right? You know? <laughs> and, and he said to me, he said, you know what? He said, 95% of the music industry is a bunch of bullshitters. Mm-hmm. And the other 5% don't know what they're doing either. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's so, right. So that made you feel 100% better. Yeah, that right. made me feel 100% better. <laughs> and, but, it, you know what? Everybody seems to want to think they know what they're doing in the industry. And they mm-hmm. really do. And some of them have their, their finger on the pulse of something that is working right now. Mm-hmm. But the music industry is so ever-changing. Oh, and it's constantly thing, yeah. evolving. And especially with the presence of social media. When I first moved to Nashville, there were six bars downtown. Mm, wow. Six. Wow. Six. So it. much has changed. Right. And, you know, Joe Nichols was playing acoustic at Rippy's and Dirk Bentley was playing over at so Tootsie's cool. and, mm-hmm. you know, and, and nobody was nobody and that was okay. And we didn't have social media to blow each other up or anything mm-hmm. like that. People were just people. Right. And so when, when, you know, the whole social media influx <clears throat> came in, it completely changed. You know, the mm-hmm. internet completely changed the industry and people have some great ideas and they're coming up with new innovative ways to blow up their artists and, you know, and God love everybody for what they do and how they do it. Mm-hmm. But nobody really knows what's going to hundred percent work, you know, sure. especially when you're dealing with a fickle public that they may love you one day and they may hate you the next, Yeah, you know, and nobody knows that. And I will be the first to admit that I don't know everything either, but at the same time, if I and figure it out, you can damn well bet I'm going to do it. So. Nice, <laughs> nice. I love your I love, attitude. Yeah, yeah, I love her determination and her passion. It's just like, whoa. Yeah, and, and now right now you I have... Got, I got kids to feed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and and you've, got, you've got two artists that you're very close to. Yes. So yes. how big is too big? Or, or can you put a number on it? Like how many artists would be ideal for you to work with? Honestly, because I've seen Jerry Maguire. I know how this works. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, um, I I am hoping that, you know, this year financially is going to be, you know, the first year I was lucky to turn a profit last year. Mm-hmm. You know, I was really lucky. We launched, like I said, July 31st, and I still ended up with a profit, and that was good. It's amazing but, that you turn a profit the first. I mean, because most new businesses don't do that. Right. Well, I I tried to write everything off with the kitchen sink, and it mm-hmm. didn't hop. So <laughs> 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 uh-huh. when you don't have any money, you can't spend it, so mm-hmm. it's okay. Mm-hmm. But no, um, but I'm hoping this year financially puts us in a position that we're able to, you know, put everybody on staff with a salary and to really grow as a company itself mm-hmm. with everything that we're doing. I think especially going the female, all female route, the way that we're planning with the partnership, um, you know, we will, we can employ men. I'm not saying that, you know, mm-hmm. we're discriminating no against men, but what <laughs> I'm saying is the actual partners in it are all going to be female. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I'm hoping with that, you know, maybe it's going to open some opportunities for some grants and for some other things so that we can actually put more money into staffing so that we can comfortably grow and represent more artists. I've represented larger numbers on my roster before, and I thought I could handle it, but I really felt like it was almost a disservice because there were so many, and we were just fighting to keep our head above water. Yeah, you know, with so yeah. many things that needed to be done. I think the new direction that we're going with Smoke Show, or Smoke Show and just keeping a couple on the manage, which when we manage, we manage holistically. We, we cover every single possible aspect of everything they do mm-hmm. possible. I mean, it, it, we overthink it times 150. So when um, – but I think still to be able to provide services – contractually, meaning, um, you know, if a, if a new artist came to me and said, you know, I'd like to work with you, um, you know, take a look, tell me what you think, you know, we would literally pick them apart and mm-hmm. pick apart their social media, pick apart their music, pick apart who they're producing with, 
you know, every single aspect of what they're doing. And then we would choose what things they really needed to work on that were kind of deal breakers for them, why they're Mm. not succeeding, why they're not doing well. You know, sometimes it's just a branding issue, you know, Um, but just to fix those pieces for them, you know, so that they can have a little bit more success. I think that is going to be what smoke show is going to be about from now on, because Mm. taking everybody on and having a lot of managed artists, there are a lot of pieces to put together in that puzzle. And so I would rather just focus on two strong candidates and put all those pieces together for them and then, you know, work individually with other people and maybe do it piece by piece for them rather than trying to holistically cover everything that they need. So So. interesting. I'm learning so much stuff from you. (laughs) Uh, You know, and I've never been a business guy. I've I've just, you know, I just do this and I I just have fun. And and I (laughs) I can relate to the artists uh, because if they're like me and they're more creative and less business, they've got to have somebody like you. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And that's always, I mean, that's, the business side of it has always been exciting to me. But I also had you know, I was also a creative person coming up, you Mm -hmm. know, I was involved in every kind of music you can possibly think of, Mm -hmm. you know, I played instruments, I sang, you know, I sang opera, I had a trained voice and I can't sing. Wow. For real? Yes. It's, I would Whatever. love to hear you. Can hear you, you still do it? Just, can you sing a few bars? <laughs> it's been years, and I could not even do it anymore. But people uh-huh. from my people from back home, they probably remember uh-huh. me singing the national anthem and oh, wow. at all the sports events. And I sang for the bishop when he came in town. You know, I went to a yeah. private school. So, so that kind yeah, of I explains that. that explains some things because you didn't just wake up and decide to get into this. I mean, you, no, you, you had have music in your life. Yeah. Music has been my life. I mean, I've always loved music, and I love every kind of music I can you would die if you saw my Pandora list I mean it's uh-huh. like I've got everything from like dirty rap to <laughs> I mean to classic rock I mm-hmm. get, the only thing I really don't get into is like metal anything I, yeah. I can't get there but uh-huh. so no otherwise. like screamo or anything no no screamo <laughs> no screamo uh-huh. but I came up on I mean I literally came up on country though and that's my first love and it's probably where it's where my love's always going to be mm-hmm. so um, I've had a couple of artists in and rock and a couple of artists in pop or hip hop that you know have approached me and I just it's not where my not where my love is, and it's also not where my my contacts are. Yeah, Networking and if you, and if you, if you pick them up, it wouldn't be fair to them. Yeah. No, it wouldn't. Yeah. And I am not afraid to tell somebody that. Yeah. You know that it, this uh, that my networking would do you no good at all right. whatsoever. Right. So. Now you there are a couple. I'm not going to push you on this, but there are a few people in the chat that are begging you to sing. I am not going to sing. <laughs> no, I, I have Honestly, I have not sang except to my babies. I've seen my babies to sleep when they were little, but I have not sang publicly since. Well, this isn't really public. There's nobody listening to this, you know. I just... no, no, it's, it will be on file forever. No, no, I, I was. God, I, this is so embarrassing. I was Miss Teen of Illinois in '94. And really? I that's was cool. in the Miss Teen of America pageant in '95, and that's the last time I publicly publicly sang. I can wow, honestly so you've say done you've done it thing. all. <laughs> yeah, and, but you know what? I I grew up in a little bitty town. I grew up two miles outside of a town of 800. Mm-hmm. You know, I was a little farm girl. You know, I went fishing with my dad, and you mm-hmm. know, I was I I wasn't. You know, but I was cultured. My parents did very well with trying to keep me from being a sheltered child, you know. So mm-hmm. I, I've done a lot of things. I I went on a gifted study tour to England when I was 13. And, you know, I, I've, I've lived. I've so lived. You got, you've, got like the, life. you've got the looks and the smarts and the talent yeah, and yeah, everything. Yeah. You got it all. You got it all. Whatever. Yeah, I, I'm I, jelly. she just can't take compliments. That's the only thing. <laughs> no, I can't. That's the only problem. I was, I was never raised to be a proud person. Mm-hmm. I, I've always been raised to be humble, so that's mm-hmm. how I'm going to leave it. 
So that I appreciate it. it well, you're very welcome. Nice that you compliment. Nobody me. ever compliment you, her again. <laughs> <Never>. <laughs> so where do you see Smoke Show say by this time next year? Hopefully, we're we're turning some dollars, and we're yeah. for everybody, and you know we're loving every minute of it. You know, I would really, I I would love to see Gracia and Barry just kicking kicking butt and taking names. You know, that would make me happier. It'd make me feel like they were really getting what, out what I'm trying to put in. You know, sure. And that's it's not about me; it's about them. You know, so, and same thing. I would like to think that the artists that we help in the coming year with the the changes that we make that. You know, they feel like they've benefited from our services as well. Mm-hmm. So, um, as far as long as Smoke Show still has a good reputation with people that are where are happy with the things that we've done, then I'll I'll consider it a success. I could care less, honestly, about money, but money is great, so I'm not going to yeah. lie about mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but we all need it. You know, we've all got to survive. But at the same time. You know, if, if everybody feels like they've accomplished something because of us, then we've done our job. So. Now, what I'm going to ask you, uh, I guess, a two part question. So somebody that comes to Nashville, or, or, well, it doesn't have to be Nashville, anywhere, anywhere in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, if they want to get into to your line of work, what are what, what is some good advice that you can you can give that person? Honestly, you either have it or you don't. Okay. You know, you've, you've got to be willing to give up sleep. You've got to mm-hmm. be willing to give up sanity, you know, sure. <laughs> you honestly have to, you give up a lot in this position. You're probably you already know? used to that stuff being a mother of five though. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I haven't yeah. slept She's got the experience. longer than four hours <laughs> in a night wow. since my first child was born, you know, right. so I'm not, I'm, they're all in school now, you know, and. I honestly had to have smoke show just to be able to know what to do with myself (laughs) because this is the first year they're all in school. I've been, you know, home with them otherwise. But, um, but honestly there, it is a huge sacrifice and you have to be willing to learn as much about yourself and to accept your failures and to, you know, celebrate your successes as, as best as you can. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, no matter how far you get with everything that you do, you always want to go a step further. And if you're not one of those people that's going to put yourself out there and be strong and go a step further, you know, if you're going to break under the pressure, it's probably not your job. Yeah, it's a very, very stressful, strenuous job. But it's also something that I live for. I enjoy it, you know. And it just basically boils down to you wanting to help other people, I guess. Yeah, you have to be a helper. Mm -hmm. You have to be a helper. And um, I think uh, you have to enjoy networking. See, for me, for me, it just it sounds insane because you've got you've got to have this servant's heart. And then you have to be able to turn on a dime and just be like, just you have to be a hard ass. on. Yes, that's what I was looking (laughs) for. You, and honestly, I think a lot of single women would do extremely, like single mothers, mm-hmm. would be excellent in the music industry. Mm-hmm. And four out of six of our staff are divorced or single mothers. Now, and did you do that I, on purpose I, or did that just happen? There, there is a <laughs> grit uh-huh. to them because they have to fight. They have to survive. You know, there's a determination there. You know, that, you know, it's not just about themselves. You know, they have to provide, you know, and be mom and dad both. And that's kind of, you know, that's kind of what it's about. You have to be able to serve and be a mama. Mm-hmm. And, but you got to put down the law when it's <laughs> time yeah. to do that too. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, a lot of life has taught me what I need to know to deal with artists, I think. It- it takes a very special person to, to be in this industry, it sounds like. Yeah, it does. <laughs> but I appreciate you saying that. I, I wouldn't call myself special. I think I'm very average. But um, but I, I would say probably if anything is not average about me, it would be my determination. I just, I don't quit. I don't give up. Mm-hmm. You know, you can you can strike me down 15 times and I'll get up 16. So <laughs> let's go. <laughs> yeah, let's go. And almost if, if something's 
it seems like when things go wrong, that's when I get tougher. Mm-hmm. I get a lot tougher at that point, you know, and I get my determination and I get my grit underneath me. So, um, I, I enjoy it though. I love every minute of it. Mm-hmm. I really do. Well, we love what you have to say and, and, Thank and, you. and, and I, sometime, you know, in, in the near future, I, I would, we would just love to sit down with you and just, you know, find out everything, you know, just, what's, sure. yeah. Cause I think sure. that would be fun. Um, yeah. And I'm looking forward to June. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ah, How much fun is that going to be? Yeah. It's hey, going to be a blast. What, All the ladies are going to be there. All right. Look, look. I got a challenge for you, though. Between now okay. and June, you need to, like, start singing in the shower a little bit more. Maybe you no. can sing for us then. No. Just, like, you 20 seconds. A couple opera uh, lessons to get you warmed I up yeah. again. Do it. It, it. Little Little crowds, oh my gosh, you! I would have an anxiety, <laughs> and I don't even have anxiety, but I would probably faint. We found her kryptonite. We did. Uh-huh. We found it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's my one thing. And you know what? I am not too proud to say that. Nope, ain't gonna happen. Ain't gonna happen. <laughs> now, if okay, now I had another question, and I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to forget. Now, okay. we, we talked about uh, advice for somebody that wants to maybe get into the whole management thing. Right. Um, now, what about advice for somebody that, that, that is desperately trying to find a manager? What, what do they need to look for just right off the bat when they start that search? Whew, that's a good question. It's a tough question, I know. It, it, it is because it makes me step outside of myself and say, what would, what mm-hmm. would I want somebody to see in me? Sure. Um, so I would say, you know, honestly... <sighs> It's got to be a tr- it's a trust issue. You know, mm-hmm. if they if they if they can't trust that, you know, you have to be able to trust your manager. Mm-hmm. You really do. And because that's just something that builds in on time. Um but it, it it's kind of a catch 22 because you you have to be able to trust them but you got to sign that contract off the bat, yeah, right? Yeah, that's right. But there should be there should be a good amount of time talking, you mm-hmm. know, or if you can't meet in person, at least FaceTiming, but face, face-to-face meetings help a lot too. But even so, um, you know, you have to be able to know that <sighs> this is hard. Well, I mean, there okay, are some, so- okay, there are some managers that will say, okay, when you sign that paper, what I say goes. Mm-hmm. And if I tell you that you're going to have purple hair tomorrow, you're going to have purple hair tomorrow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. I'm not that manager. And okay. it, it, uh, on, some, on some levels, I'm learning why managers are that way. Mm-hmm. You know, because I, I started out to giving. I started out smoke show being, you know, trying to make sure everybody was happy. You know, I was, I was, I was almost being a mom too much. I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't harboring that manager side of me enough. I wasn't being tough enough. And I, I tried to cushion a lot of the blow when I have, my job isn't to be your best friend, although I love being best friends with my Mm -hmm. artists, but they also know that my job is to tell them the things that nobody else will. So many artists mm. are so incubated and surrounded by people that tell them they're great and they're wonderful and they're going to make it. And the reality is, is that if they haven't made it so far, there's a reason for it. Yes. And yes. my job. And they need that in their lives. They need somebody they need to keep somebody them to, grounded. Yeah, somebody to my keep it My job is to tell you, this is why it's not working so good and mm. you need to work on this. And, um, I, I didn't do that at first. I cushioned, you know, and I, mm-hmm. and I incubated and I, you know, I supported and everything, but I've learned that if I'm not just straight up honest about things, then it actually hurts them more than anything, mm-hmm. you know? So yeah. if, if, when you're looking for a manager, don't, don't look for the person that's telling you you're the greatest thing since sliced bread, because mm-hmm. They're not going to help you. Mm-hmm. Oh, that is great advice. So that is wonderful. You. That is so yeah. wonderful. Right. And if, if people had that at the beginning of, of their career, if everybody had that, uh, things could go so much differently. Right. Uh, I but I, I mean, on the same token, I mean, 
there are managers that, you know, think they have a vision for somebody that maybe isn't relevant. You know, you've got to consider everything that you're doing as an up and coming artist right now. You aren't even going to see any success out of it for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. You know, think about how long it took, you know, some of the people that have songs on the radio right now that are number Mm -hmm. ones. It took them a year and a half to push that one song Mm -hmm. to number one. Sure. And as the public, we look at it and just think, man, that happened overnight. But no, it took 10, 15 years for some of these people. Right, right. I mean, the longevity of their career before they even got there is ridiculous. But even just one hit song that all the components are there, it can take a year Mm -hmm. of pushing, you know. And, And that's something that, you know, an artist definitely needs to get used to the idea of, too, is that, as much as we'd love to just push that sucker and get it right out there and everything else, the reality of it is, is that that's not typical. So, right, right. Um, you know, but there are some managers that, you know, would say that their vision for their artist is what's best. And I, th- I would, I would definitely caution an artist, anybody that says that what they're doing, if it sounds like it's on radio right now, that might not be the best manager either because mm-hmm. you what's on radio right now isn't going to be what it's going to be two years from now. Right, right. right. It changes. So you need somebody that's going to push I, I've you I've never thought of that. Far down yeah. the road, never th- really I never think about stuff road. like that. Yeah. Yeah, and what we do is cool because I mean, you know, we you know, we basically promote people when we have them on the show and and we wouldn't have them on the show if they weren't good in the first place. So we can throw out all the compliments. Right. Um, but we're not their <laughs> exactly. manager. We're not their exactly. manager. Yeah. Exactly. And you know what? They it it has come back to me a time or two when somebody said, you know, everybody's my fan but you and I said, I'm your biggest fan, but mm-hmm. I'm not going to be the one that keeps you from your success. You know, I I just can't. Well, you call yourself more of a motherly figure, but you're kind of the opposite because their mothers would all say, I love it. It (laughs) sounds great. You could be like, oh, and the mom is going to go, that's I'm great, I'm usually son. like the I love it, but person. But. You know, there's always a but. There. But. Like, but. You know, let's think about this or, you know, whatever. Or, you know, I'll, I'll definitely try to cushion a little bit and say, I love this and I love this and I love this. And then I'll sneak in the, but I think we got to change this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's usually how it goes. <laughs> so, so what's on on the the immediate horizon for Smoke Show? What do you have coming up in the next few months that you can talk about? We have new music coming out for Gracia. It's just mm-hmm. bomb. Her EP is so exciting. I can't mm-hmm. even ah, like I cannot wait for it to come out. We've got three incredible songs on there. You know, I think she mentioned you know the one that um, that. You know, Kelsey Ballerini was yes, a yes. writer on. She's that's her going to be her first single coming out, and that's mm-hmm. very exciting. Now, I did and talk. Then, I did talk to Gracia, and she did say that she might try to get me that early. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, we'll good. definitely do that. Okay, I thought you were saying, yeah, so, we'll talk. We'll about definitely that. not no, do that, no, Chris. We can do that. We can do that. <laughs> we trust you. And then oh, good. Um, she's got another another great song on there coming out. The whole. The whole EP has got a whole beachy vibe to it, a mm-hmm. summer vibe. And, you know, one of those you just want to have the top off and mm-hmm. flying down the highway and having fun with your friends. And sure. it's just a great vibe. And it, something that we all wish we were doing right now because it's been such a dismal mm-hmm. winter is always dismal. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but it's, it's definitely a fun one. And then the last song on the EP, it's going to be, it's going to, be a surprise for country music and mm-hmm. i'm really excited about it i cannot tell it's one of those that's so good you cannot tell but i want to know it's it's definitely going to be fun and we're hoping and to have those so, released before the cma fest you think maybe uh, definitely her first one okay uh the, her first one that she mentioned to you will be there okay. uh, possibly the second the third one we're releasing when uh with the fully p around the end of summer. Oh, so okay. Okay. It, it, that's how it fits into the game plan. But then Barry is also coming out with new music. She goes into the studio um, this week and she, oh my gosh, her stuff is so awesome and so much fun. I love her to death. And she's mm-hmm. got a whole different sound from Gracia. 
and got her own personality and the, her spunk. She she really throws everything into her music and mm-hmm. so much thought comes out of that little girl's head. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and I love her to death. <laughs> and um, so she, she's got an incredible five song EP that's coming out. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, hers is, hers is a little bit different. Gracious is more of a project. Barry's um, is... More of a showcase. She she's showcasing, you know, kind of showing her cards, you know, mm-hmm. letting everybody see all the different kinds of things that she wants to do in music. But it's still cohesive. Mm-hmm. I have a great producer, and um, couldn't be happier with with how both are turning out. We're very excited about it. So, and then we will be um, we'll making we'll be making the partnership announcement soon, and the new direction, and kind of getting a little bit of promotion for ourselves out there right now. Uh, we, when we launched smoke show, it was all about promoting our artists and everything. And we've, we've gained a good fan base for ourselves. but mm-hmm. you know, I'm really trying to, you know, maybe, you know, introduce us to people as a business now and show them the services, yes. you know, and that we can provide them rather than it just being kind of a mystery of how everything's going on. So, well, we believe um, in you and we, we love you. what you're doing and helping, yeah. you know, develop these, these, uh, these artists and yeah. anything that we can do to help you out. Just, just let me know. I'm we'll... excited yes, for the future. Yeah, I am too. I am. Too. I, you know what? I hope we can have another interview a year from now and go, wow, can you believe how much we've changed? <laughs> I, I love to grow and change. That's the best part of everything is to watch how everybody evolves. And that goes to the same for Spoke Show. I can't wait to see how we change too. So. For sure. And you've got to be so proud of it. I mean, you, you started this and... And, um, I mean, was, was a little bit of it and I don't want to get into a whole, whole big, cause we're out of time, and, but I, mean, I, I don't have another show like, you know, coming up, so I'm not too rushed, but all I right. mean, what was it almost, and you can tell me to shut up if you want, but what okay. was it almost like a desperation move at the time? Always. It was. Every big okay. Move I've ever made every big move I've ever made. I was, I was, um, I was coming out of a pretty bad uh, relationship mm-hmm. at the time. Um, I had I had started a business that uh, was actually a female sports fan apparel business that was supposed to be amazing and had literally poured my life savings and everything into it for a year. Mm-hmm. And my partner had to pull out last minute. Mm. Oh. So I'm a 97% owner of a female sports fan apparel business and 90% of nothing is nothing. So mm, <laughs> I, yeah. and we, that was two months before we were supposed to launch that she had to pull out for personal reasons. And so when my life's work went down the tubes, I literally took a trip to Nashville and cried on my friend's shoulders and said, I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah. And they said, I don't know why you ever left. Mm hmm. And I thought, you know, I don't know why I ever left either. It was some of my best memories, some of my best friendships, some mm-hmm. of my best opportunities. And, you know, I thought, you know, I've learned so much since I was here before, you know, I, on the business side of things. Yeah. I wonder how I could fit in. And I I thought about it. I worked at it. I talked to mentors and learned. And for six months, I struggled with whether I really wanted to do this or not. But when one of my mentors sat down with me and said, you know, what you're doing is what Nashville's missing right now. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, let's just do it. So that's how Smoke Show came to be. So looking back, are you... Resurrected, born again. <laughs> so so do you feel like maybe the, the sports apparel wasn't meant to be? And you no, feel like this is the right happen. direction? <laughs> so you're still going to do that too? Yeah. Uh, once I get Smoke Show in a place where I feel like we've had, had enough success, mm-hmm. um, you know, the girls that I'm bringing up underneath me, I'm trying to train them alongside me so that they can learn as much from me as they possibly can. And I, I want them 
you know, eventually to be able to take the reins and I'd like to take some of the profits and move it over to the sports mm, and apparel gotcha. business and, and do that too. So you, you got know? a big plan for everything. I don't plan little. <laughs> I had five kids. That's how you do it. That little either. <laughs> That's how you do it. Oh my goodness. We love you to you death. You only have one life, you know, you yeah. only have one life. You might as well live it big. Absolutely. I, you know, it's been an absolute pleasure um, getting to know you and, yes. and get some behind the scenes stuff yeah, and sure. yeah, just figure out what you're all about. Um, you're yeah. really lis- interesting to listen to. Like, I didn't talk as much this episode. I was just like, kind of listening. <laughs> I know. I couldn't believe it. It's like, ooh, Allie's She's not very talking. interesting. She Thank is. Thank you. You I mean, don't we, even know the half yet. We'll yeah. have to do about I know. interviews. And I like, know. I know. I know. We should get together like once every like quarter or something and do like a, <laughs> some sort of a. Be like, oh, God, up. she's going to tell another 15 stories. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you got them too. <laughs> I do. Oh, girl. It, woo. My whole math stories I could tell you some stuff that I'd probably get blackballed if I said it. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that's great. Uh, but it's going to be fun this June. We get to meet you guys and hang out for a little bit at BB Kings. And yes, and, and you guys are up for some awards, so that should be fun. Yeah. I'm so excited. Yeah. For this I hope everybody's fast. voting. Yeah, we've had about 8,500 votes so far. Um, yeah, so it's pretty good. Well, we're, no, we're newbies to you guys, so if we don't get anything this year, we'll definitely be back. There's always next, next year. year. There's always next always year. Always next year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know what? You've got so many great people involved. I would be happy to see anybody win. You know, Aww. that's the great part about your program is mm-hmm. that, you know, no matter whose team you're on or whose roster you're on or whatever, there, it, country music used to be a family. Mm-hmm. It really did, and and I still feel that way. And there's sure. nobody that's in the industry that I wouldn't support. Mm-hmm. So, well, good, and and we sort of look at it like this. I mean, it's not really about the award; it's about you know getting in there and getting to know each other and networking and yeah. meeting everybody that day and just you know learning from each other. Everybody um, can learn from everybody. Sure. Nobody knows it all. Right. right. Ninety-five and five. Remember that? Yes, 95. I got it. See, I'm learning all kinds of stuff from you. <laughs> uh, well, I guess that's a show. I guess we're going to wrap it up. Awesome. Uh, Thank today. you guys so much for having me. Well, it's it's been our pleasure getting to know you and getting to know the girls that uh, that work with you and everything. It's just been fun. It's been a fun yeah. night. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For sure. And you guys, are, you're, sure. you're all part of the family now. That's right. And you're so, part of ours. Sweet. Part of Smoke Show, kind of. I'm a, I'm a dude. Yeah, you're That's dude. Okay. No men That's allowed. Okay. Just, just the bosses are women. You're oh, to be around gotcha. Women, right? Yeah, I can be bossed around. That's cool. I'm good with that. I'm good with that. <laughs> uh, but I do want to thank everybody for listening today and tuning in. And uh, if you learned half as much as I think I did today, you know, you're doing pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I, I think. So uh, until, did you take us out last time or did I? I think I did. Okay. I think so. I'll do it this time. All right, so we don't take you for granted. I promise you that. We love you all for listening, whether it's on the ChrisTopProgram.com, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, wherever it is. Uh, can't thank you enough. It uh, means the world to us. And until we broadcast again, please remember this. Life is good. And we're gone. <laughs> Maybe a door things might be looking grim. I guess it's time for an acronym. Two.